Um, an old Santa Fe trader, Philip Thompson, whose house is just a mile up the road, wrote a rather lengthy letter to General William Rosecrans on June 24, 1864, about the dire situation in and around Arrow Rock. And I'll just use one line from his letter, because it sums it up nicely. Quote, we are in a bad state of affairs, unquote. <laughs> now, troops from the Missouri State Militia, which was another federal unit, we had all kinds of federal units designated, and it's hard to keep up with all of them. But um, under Lieutenant J.M. Woodruff, were dispatched to help protect Arrow Rock shortly after that letter. Woodruff's company was quartered in a brick building uh, on Main Street, down the street from Wood and Houston's large mercantile house. Not positive, but I think that this may have been in the big lot close, uh, just down from the tavern a little bit. Uh, Woodruff, being a rather crafty fellow and having had some combat experience, uh, did not place his unit flag on the building where his troops were quartered. He placed it on Wood and Houston's uh, store. <laughs> so on the night of July 20th, 1864, a band of guerrillas rode into town just after 10 p.m. bent on exterminating the Missouri State Militia. And this is a lithograph of... Uh, the raid on Lawrence, Kansas, but it gives you the effect of, of what we experienced here in Arrow Rock. Quote, they fired several volleys at the store and finally set it on fire, expecting to dislodge the enemy, unquote. But by the time the bushwhackers discovered their mistake, Lieutenant Woodruff's men were up, dressed, and ready inside of their, quote, brick fortress, unquote. The, fight, the ensuing fight lasted for nearly 45 minutes and the guerrillas set fire to surrounding buildings in the block in an attempt to drive out the federal soldiers. In the confusion and darkness, the troops slipped out of the back door of the building and into the countryside. You always got to watch those back doors. <laughs> That's why before cops go in, they always send somebody to that. Now, Major Henry Seuss gave Brigadier General E.B. Brown this after-action report. Quote, July 22nd, 1864, I arrived at Arrow Rock at 7.30 last night found the three missing soldiers of the 1st Missouri State Militia here. The rebels were under Todd and Yeager, about 150 strong. Yeager was mortally wounded in the head. They took about 40 horses and $20,000 worth of goods. One woman was wounded by the rebels. Todd left at 11 p.m. taking Yeager in an ambulance and traveled 22 miles that night camping about seven miles from Miami. Now, George Todd and Dick Yeager were, had been part of Quantrill's raid on Lawrence, Kansas, and they were comrades in arms of William Bloody Bill Anderson, who was Missouri's most notorious uh, bushwhacker. Uh, the wounded woman, I found out, was actually Anna Cobb, one time the proprietress of the tavern. I'm not positive if she was operating the tavern when she was wounded, but it's a possibility. Now, Dr. J. N. Dunlap was summoned to dress Jader's mortal wounds, and he was aided in his endeavor by a young woman named Jenny Flannery. Now this placed Dr. Dunlap in grave danger of being arrested and executed for aiding and abetting the enemy. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dunlap got rather uh, antsy and he and Joseph Houston Jr., whose warehouse had been burned in this raid, they took their families and fled to Canada and they spent, the, both families spent the winter together in a small cabin in Ingersoll, Canada. And with the mercantile house destroyed and Houston going up to Canada, Willwood departed and went to St. Louis. Uh, and they buried uh, what they could had left of their capital out on Willwood's father's farm and hoped that after the war they could come back and dig it up and 
and rebuilt. And that's another story, and they did, and that's why you have Whitney Houston Bank today, Marshall. <laughs> Now, on August the 5th, 1864, the Marshall Courthouse was burned by Jackson's guerrillas. And the reason they burned the courthouse was because it was being used to bivouac federal troops and the lower floor was used, being used by a federal cavalry as a stable. So there are no court records there. The court was not convening. So as far as, even though the bushwhackers were local guys, they considered it a fair military target. Well, following that, Lieutenant Colonel Basil Lazier, the first cavalry, Missouri State Militia, uh, arrived in the county, and he promptly marched to Arrow Rock on August the 7th. In two skirmishes along the way, three guerrillas were killed and several others were wounded. Near Arrow Rock, soldiers found a black man who had been killed by the guerrillas. And I noticed in a lot of these reports that uh, we, the federal troops do find a lot of uh, black people who have been killed or hung or otherwise. And I think in some ways, I think there was some resentment towards blacks as if, you know, this whole war came about because of slavery and, and some of the questions involving uh, owning slavery. And I think there was some animosity in some quarters generated that way. But uh, Lieutenant Colonel Lazier wrote, Quote, this is certainly the most rebellious county I have been in. I have arrested several women that I will send in due time and have arrested several of the worst rebels that I am holding hostage for the lives of Union men. This county needs rough handling. And as guerrillas have threatened what they will do, I have warned and notified their friends that I would hold them responsible for the acts of the guerrillas and will retaliate for any violence done on any Union man, either in person or property." Unquote. 